Hello everyone, welcome back to another video on the channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at Telcoin as this is a very strong project with a very strong team. So they have recently added two employees as well that I think is going to help them be very successful. And so this cryptocurrency has a real world use case with remittance payments across many different countries and they are in the middle of a lot of development. And so I think they are laying the groundwork to be very successful going forward. And so if you enjoy this video, please hit the like button and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. And if you're interested in buying the cryptocurrency I'm talking about, there is a link down below to KuCoin that you can sign up for. That is where I buy this cryptocurrency. And so as always, this is not financial advice. This is just my opinion. And so please do your own research. And so before we get started talking about that cryptocurrency, I'd like to take a look at the overall market and things to be looking out for. And so we can see here that Bitcoin is currently trading right around $49,000. And Ethereum is at $4,077. And so we saw cryptocurrency jump a little bit up to about $50,000 after the US inflation rate was announced that it was 6.8% over the last year. This is the highest increase since 1982. And so we saw inflation rise 0.8% in November after rising 0.9% in October. And so the inflation could be very bullish for cryptocurrencies. This could be a hedge against the US dollar. And so let's take a look at this as well as this could cause more volatility in the next week as well. And so the Fed is gonna be holding its two day meeting on December 14th and 15th. The central bank is expected to discuss speeding up the end of its bond buying program. And so if the Fed decides to taper, its bond purchases more quickly, it could also begin to raise interest rates faster. And so Jerome Powell gave us a heads up that they're gonna be discussing this at December meetings and so his comments followed by many other Fed speakers who all suggested that the central bank could end the program sooner than the current timeline of June 2022 and so this is just something to keep an eye on this is an upcoming event next week and so this will cause more volatility in the cryptocurrency markets and so let's take a look here at Telcoin so we can see this is currently trading just over one cent and so it has gone down quite a bit since they have announced that they have passed the bill LB649 in May. And so I still think there's a ton of potential for this as the team has constantly been developing. So once they release their official product and start marketing, I think this will do very well going forward. And so let's take a look at Telcoin chart here. We can see that there is very strong support right around one cent here. And so back at the beginning of the year in March, we saw this as heavy resistance and ended up breaking through that after the law was passed for LB649. And then since then we have tested this as support several times. And so we saw support there during the middle of May again, then we touched down and found support in July. And now we are back at that same support level. And so this could be a good buying opportunity for this cryptocurrency going forward. And so next let's take a look at some news that was just released a couple of days ago. And so Telcoin has hired two more employees to add to their team. And so we can see here that the first person that they have hired is Rajesh, a Telcoin advisor since 2017, has formally joined the company as chief commercial officer. And so most recently Rajesh, together with his team, was responsible for building the partnerships, digital merchants, distribution, and government accounts from scratch into a multi-million dollar annual revenue generating business for MasterCard's data and advisory services business in Asia Pacific. And so if we take a look at his LinkedIn here, we can see that he in the past has worked for MasterCard. And so, and so as we can see here, Rajiv spent about six years working for MasterCard as the head of partnerships and business development, and then also the head of merchant for distribution and digital partnership sales. And so I definitely think this says something about the Telcoin team as Rajis has worked for MasterCard for six years, has quit working for MasterCard and has now taken a position with Telcoin as the chief commercial officer. And so the next person I'd like to talk about here is Tim and he has joined the Telcoin team as the chief compliance officer. And so he has a ton of experience with compliance for Telcoin. And so I definitely think he is a very good addition to the team. He has worked for the United States Security and Exchange Commission then recruited Tim to work for an enforcement prosecutor in their Los Angeles office, where he gained a real appreciation of how regulators look at issues and how they decide what matters to pursue. And so in addition to his compliance experience, he has also created trading platforms and implemented slash oversaw compliance for integrals entities worldwide. And so Tim brings a large amount of experience in creating the legal and compliance structures necessary for a startup and crypto to be compliant and firsthand knowledge of how to implement and oversee needed compliance monitoring programs. 
He intends to integrate legal and compliance into business governments and product development so that they are symbiotic, which will increase efficiency and time to the market. And so I think that Tim is a very good addition to the Telcoin team in addition to Rajesh. And so I think this is going to add a ton of potential and legitimacy to Telcoin moving forward. And so next, let's take a look at an article here that was released a couple of months ago where they did state from January 2022 moving forward, they expect to have a version of the product that will be primed and ready for greatly increased marketing and deeper global scalability. And so I know a lot of people say that they're not fast enough at developing. However, I strongly believe that they are working very hard behind the scenes. They do not want to announce what they are working on so people do not copy what they are doing. And so I think this team is doing very well. They are reaching out to the right people. They already have a law signed in place in Nebraska with LB649. And then I'm sure they are reaching out to other countries as well to get something set in place. And so Telcoin's next phase will be heavily focused on revenue generation. And from version 3.2 forward, we expect to begin generating serious revenue and we'll be focused on optimization as we engage new partners and enter additional geographies. And so if I take a look at the big picture of cryptocurrencies, I do not believe that there's that many cryptocurrencies that are actually being implemented with a real world use case today. And so Telcoin is still working on this. However, starting next year, they will plan on having a finished version of their product that they will plan on launching and start marketing. So I think this is why I believe there's so much potential for Telcoin. And so next I'll like take a look at this article back from May where Telcoin drafted crypto banking legislation has been signed into law in Nebraska. And so Governor Pete Ricketts has signed into law the legislative bill 649, also known as the Nebraska Financial Innovation Act, as they have been working with Telcoin to seek to bring its own digital asset backed financial services to the US consumers in a compliance first fashion. And so as the Congress is continuing to learn about cryptocurrencies and the best way to regulate them, I would not be surprised if Telcoin or Nebraska or even the legislative bill 649 gets brought up as well during that discussion. And, and so Telcoin also realizes they have to focus on the largest payment remittance corridors. And one of those happens to be El Salvador. They are the fifth largest remittance recipient in Latin America in the Caribbean with more than 7.3 billion being sent home throughout 2021. And so El Salvador is already crypto friendly. They already accept Bitcoin as payment. And so this could be a very good country to start focusing on. And so as we can see here, we can see that El Salvador is the fifth largest with $7.3 billion in Latin America and the Caribbean. And so even though they are the fifth largest, the amount of payment remittance that happens in El Salvador accounts for 26.6% of their global domestic product. And so payment remittance is very important for El Salvador. And so next year, the Telcoin team has recognized that it is important to send money smarter to South Asia as this is the world's leading region for inbound remittances, where they have already this year sent over $159 billion worth. And so with the connections that Rajesh has, this may be a very good opportunity for him to reach out with global sales and partnerships to these other countries and increase the amount of countries that Telcoin is working with. And so if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see future cryptocurrency content. And I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks. Bye.